eat. You can't, you can't do it. And let me tell you something. That's the boldness of God. That's the way God wants you to be bold. He wants us to be bold. Tell me about it. God said, bring it to me. Bring it to me. You big enough to bring it to me? Bring it to me. That's not disrespecting God. That's honoring God. That's honoring God because God knows you can't do nothing with it. And you can't be faithful. God, I can't be focused doing this with all this stuff over here. So you take it to him. Because And God knows your heart's right. He Amen. He said, listen, I'll take that stuff out of your life. You still won't do nothing for me. But he knows if I take that out of your life, he knows what you will do. He knows you're serious. You see, God knows your motive. Amen. And he wants you to be persistent. Say persistent. persistent. Amen. Amen. There is nothing I have not obtained in my life without being persistent. I learned at a young age to be persistent. Amen. And now I'm learning at the age I am now just to take all the, 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 how I've been persistent all my life to be persistent this way. I met a man in Indianapolis in 1992, uh, I believe it was 92, 92 or 91. And I was at a conference with, with another coworker. And this guy happened to be the chief of, um, the chief of emergency medical service in Atlanta, Georgia. And when we was talking to him, he, had, he, he said to us that he was going to be the, uh, he was gonna be the, the head guy for the 1996 Olympics mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia. And that he would be needing um, paramedics to work at Olympics. And I said, well, I'm interested. And I'm sure some guys in my department would be interested too. He didn't know what he told me. He said, well, here's my number. Just give me a call. Well, I called him that year, the next year, and the next year. I would call him every six months. Hey, don't forget, I'm interested. And it, it, began, it, it began like, OK, Brian, no problem. Just keep, just keep in touch with me. Well, I stayed in touch with him, and it made him sick. He got tired of me calling him. About 1993, he's like, okay, hey, yeah, right, right, right. I'll, we, if we need you, we'll call you. That's what it got down to. Well, in 1996, he called. And I went to the Olympics. I worked, at, I worked the Olympics, and I took with me uh, 13 other guys from our department. We went to ships of seven. And we had an opportunity to do something that, um, that you know, a lot of people never had. But it was because of being persistent and being consistent. And we didn't even have uh, smartphones then. I wrote it in my, in, on my calendar, flipped it over, wrote the next year, and kept and wrote it. And when I come to it, I call. When we are persistent, things happen. In life, you can be persistent and things will happen. Just think what, what, what being with God. The unjust judge was, was favored that woman just from being persistent. That's how I know this church is going to grow because I'm going to be persistent. Amen. And I'm going to be consistent. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, that doesn't mean that we don't pray for houses and we don't pray for cars and we don't pray for finances and we don't pray for healing of your body. But God, listen, I believe God's going to do it faster because we do, we're doing what he wants us to do. Amen. I believe God's going to move faster on providing your needs and meeting your needs and opening doors that no man can close and close the doors that no man can open. When your heart, do you see this thing? When your heart is on God's agenda, mm -hmm. when you are thinking about lost souls, that's who, that's who God came for. I remind you that, again, that on the day of Pentecost, no, it didn't talk about anybody being healed. It didn't talk about blind eyes being opened. It didn't talk about, you know, somebody lame, you know, walking. And we know out of 3,000 plus people, there were some sick people there. Mm -hmm. There were lame people there. There were diseased people there. Mm -hmm. We know it. We don't have to, it don't have to be recorded. We know that you can't have that many people in any congregation or any science and nobody be sick. Mm -hmm. But nobody was healed. Nobody was reported healed. The only thing that happened on the day of Pentecost is souls were saved. Mm -hmm. Souls were won to God. That's the first thing that happened. If it's the first thing that happened, that's the most important thing to God. Amen. Souls are saved. Yes. I told Minister Ford, people called the radio today and yesterday and called my phone and was talking about, 
was speaking about and just blessed my heart how encouraged the radio broadcast has been over the last two years. And you know, when God began to hammer something in, into your head, he begins to hammer it real hard into your head, into your heart. And they, and they were saying how encouraged they have been and encouraged. And I was just just, uh, just thanking God for that and, and thanking God. Thank you that this radio broadcast, this program has encouraged people and this and that. And God kept, God kept saying, but you hadn't got any call. Somebody saying they got saved. <clears throat> Nobody called you and said, you know, this broadcast led me to the Lord. I was lost, sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, but this broadcast lifted me up out of that. No. People were encouraged. But nobody was saved. What, what, how does God feel about that? God wants people saved. The, the man that has little faith has eternal life. The man that has a whole bunch of faith has eternal life. The man has no faith, no God, has no eternal life. God wants us right here dealing with the man who's lost. If he receives the benefits of the full package of salvation and he understands that our God is big and he can heal him, praise God, but we got to get him saved. That's the plan of God. And I believe when, when our hearts turn towards the plan of God. Because our, you, you understand why you got to, why you got to be convicted of your sins? Amen. Do you know God cannot work through you Amen. if you're not convicted of your sins, Amen. if you don't understand the mercy of God? Right. You cannot be persistent, and you won't be persistent. Mm -hmm. Because every time you want to be persistent or consistent, the devil will touch you based on the sin that's in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Come here, Drake. Come here, come here, come here, Sister Jay. Amen. Every time, every time you kneel down to pray, amen, kneel down to pray, amen. Every, and the devil, as soon as you begin to pray, the devil remind you of that iniquity in your heart. As soon as you start praying, he'll, he'll remind you of the sin that you have in your heart. And then you'll be conscious of it. And when you're conscious of it, then it'll, it'll kind of create doubt. And in the doubt that he creates, you'll say, and he'll, the devil will be saying, God ain't hearing your prayer. You know you, you know you living in sin. God ain't hearing your prayer. You know you living. He, the devil won't do that until you begin to commune with God. But as soon as you begin to commune with God, then the devil will touch you. He'll touch you and remind you of all the sin you got. That your motive is wrong. And all he gotta do is create a little doubt. A little doubt. Not in your mind. But in your heart. Because the, that's where the devil comes. He comes to attack your heart. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he creates that doubt in your heart, your prayer can't be answered at that point. Because you, 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 you're regarding iniquity in your heart. And now you've got doubt. And you've got unbelief. You, you don't 100% you don't believe God's going to do it. Because the devil just put something on your mind that you've got in your heart. But when you come to him with a clean heart, when you come to him and you're not regarding iniquity in your heart and you kneel to pray, the devil can't touch you. He, he, he wants to, but he can't touch you. He, he wants to put his hands on you, but he, he don't have anything in you that belongs to him. Evil and sin belong to him. He can't touch you because your heart is cleansed. Your motive is right. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the devil can't touch you. Amen. He wants to, Amen. but he can't touch you. You do praise him. Amen. 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 He can't touch you. And so that's why, that's why the Bible, you know, that's why you gotta, you got to have a clean heart. You can't regard anything in your heart, Amen. which means life cannot be, life cannot have a whole bunch of value. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. If you value this life, if you value the stuff that's going on in this life, if that's the stuff that's going on in this life, will put a lot of iniquity in your heart. We'll put, put a lot of sin in your heart. A lot of unforgiveness in your heart. Because you're, 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 you got value on this life. You gotta live this life. 
But don't value it. Don't value it to the place where you're allowing stuff to build up in your heart. It's hard, you know, when you go through in a relationship and somebody hurt you. Somebody break your heart or somebody do something personally against you. It's hard to keep that stuff out of your heart, but you got to keep it out. Amen. 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 That's what Paul was saying. It's better not to be married. Uh -huh. Paul was like, you ain't got to worry about that. Right. You ain't married, you ain't got to worry about it, and you can do the work of the kingdom. You understand? But Peter was married, and Peter did the work of God. Took Jesus to his house when his mother-in-law had a fever. So he had to be married. He had to have a wife. He had a mother-in-law. Amen. Amen. So, so, so you, we got to learn how to love, but not allow our hearts to be full of evil. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you how you do that. Love God more. You commune with God more. You pray without ceasing. You pray always. Amen. Amen. If not, the cares of this life will keep your heart in life. The burdens of jobs, money, not having this, that, and the other will keep you always in, in the red. You, you, you can't pray. Figuring out how you can pay your bills. This year, let me tell you, income tax this year, don't go and buy a whole bunch of stuff. Amen. Take your money and pay a bill off. Amen. Amen. Take your money and before you cash your check, before you go out and Stop prom Listen, if you already promised people stuff, call them and say, I, I lied, I shouldn't have done I shouldn't have told you that. I'm not going to be able to do that. Man. So I didn't lie, but I've just changed my mind. Don't, listen, uh, listen to me. Don't go out and make debt. If you take what you got and you give to the Lord first, first, not second, not third, first, first fruit, you give it to him first. And then you take the rest of that money before you do anything with it, even paying your tithes. And you, and you take it and you say, Lord, show me what to do with this. Amen. Amen. Show me what to, how to use this. Because I'm telling you, the devil wanted, wanted to run through. The devil already got people assigned to take that money out your pocket. Amen. Family member, loved ones. And let me tell you something. The stuff they're going to come up and tell you is true. They, they are about to lose their car. They are about to have their lights turned off. They want to get will about to be turned off. All the stuff they're going to tell you is true to pull on your heartstrings. But if you take what you got and you give it to God, Lord, what do I do? What do I do with this? Because if I, if, if I got to do it, I'm, I'm about to mess it up. You don't intend to mess it up, but that's what's about to happen. You hadn't you had got it yet. Even if you made a promise, don't buy, listen, all them tennis shoes, they don't need them, I promise you. I'm telling you, you, you can, people can live without things. I'm telling you. Our daycare business, people sometimes would get into buying and couldn't pay the debt, daycare bill. But when they walk in, the nails are done. They got nice footwear on, their hair is, is, is uh, nicely done. But they couldn't, but you, you see, they don't know that it's the devil that's deceiving them. Right? Take what you've got and find, your, you don't lay your bills out now, yeah. even before you get it. Yeah. And, and say, I'm going to pay this one, I'm going to pay this off, this off, and this off, and this off. And I promise you, when you pay them off, you're going to feel so good about yourself. Amen. You're going to feel so good about yourself. Your, our intentions are good, but the devil, gonna, the devil will come and get that money. Through your loved ones, through people you care about. Amen? Amen. That's just a side note. But you've got, to, you've got to get, you've got to put your life in a position if you if you if you if things are so out of order, 
Say, God, they're out of order. I can't fix them. But I need you to fix them, God. I need you to come in and fix this for me. Because I want to do, I, I'm on this path to do your will, and I don't want anything to stop me or hinder me. Amen. So God, come in and do it. Amen. Come in and fix it. Mm -hmm. You've called me to do this work. You've assigned me to this work, God. Amen. And I'm committed to this work. And I want to do a good job. I want to do a, a faithful job. I want to do a good job. But God, get this baggage off of me. Yeah. I created this baggage, God. I, I sold these bad seeds in my life. Uh -huh. But God, I need you to come and kill them. I need you to come and kill him, God. God will do it. Amen. He knows your heart. He knows your heart. He knows already what you plan to do with your income tax if you get. He already knows. He said, but I, I'm still, you know. He already knows. Let's go to Matthew 15, 22. It says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the, the, the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. This woman, this Canaan woman, came out and says her daughter was vexed with the devil. And look what happened. But he answered her not. Here, imagine this woman speaking to Jesus, saying something to Jesus, and Jesus answered her not. And his disciples came besought him, saying, send her away. For she cried after us. Say, send that woman away. That's a Canaanite woman. That woman is crying after us. She's not one of us. Jesus didn't even say anything to the woman. And his disciples saying, send her away. They didn't have the power to do it. But Jesus had the power to send her away. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus was saying, you know, I've come for the Jews. I'm, and I'm sent for the lost house of Israel. So I didn't really come for the Gentiles. Right now, I'm giving myself to the Jews. See, Jesus knew that the Jews were going to reject him. And then he would give himself to everybody, to the Gentiles as well. But right now, he's saying, I've come for the Jews. I am the bread for the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, this woman, when, G when, she, when Jesus said nothing, when she approached him the first time, it's like praying. She was praying. Praying is nothing but communing with God, mm -hmm. talking, with, talking with God. Mm -hmm. she, here she's praying, and she hears nothing. You ever prayed and heard nothing? Mm -hmm. You ever pray? You're down there praying, and you feel like, I don't, I don't hear God say nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how this woman was. She was, and she's in front of him, and he said nothing. And as a matter of fact, she felt, she had heard the disciples saying, send her away. Mm -hmm. And we feel when we're praying, the Lord is, is the, we're feeling like the Lord is, ain't got time for us. Mm -hmm. Like we're being sent away. But look what the woman did. And, and Jesus answered and said, he said send, uh, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then came she and worship him, mm -hmm. saying, Lord, help me. You see? Mm -hmm. What did she do after she was um, uh, discouraged, mm -hmm. or, or could have been discouraged? Mm -hmm. She kept praying, mm -hmm. kept worshiping. Mm -hmm. She didn't stop. You know why she didn't stop? Because she knew she was in the right place. Right. She knew that she was in the right place. She knew she was talking to the right person. Mm -hmm. She knew that she was talking to Jesus. And although she didn't get the answer she wanted, she worshiped him. Amen. 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 Child of God, this is not the time to give up praying. Amen. It's not the time to say, well, I haven't got an answer. If, you don't, if you've been praying and you don't have an answer, you stop for a minute, and you search your heart. And you make sure you don't have anything in your heart that can hinder you from receiving an answer. And if you do, and you'll know it right off because the, the light of the Holy Ghost will shine on you. And you'll know if there's something in there. If there's something in there, 
you, you, get, you get forgiveness for that right then. You say, Lord, take this out of my heart. You got to want stuff out of your heart so you can get your prayer through. Amen. It's not enough for me to be mad at Michael or mad at Addison or, or upset with somebody. No, I'm not going to allow that to hinder my prayer. I'm not going to allow that to hinder God from hearing me. More than anything, I want God to hear me. And so I'm not going to hold on to stuff. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Because mm -hmm. I want God, whatever I'm praying about, I want God to, to move on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling God, that's the way we got to be this year. Amen. Right. I'm not, I don't have time to be, be twisted with nobody. <clears throat> Mad with nobody. Upset with nobody. Have unforgiveness in my mind. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to live in sin and live in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Live behind closed doors and do things that nobody else can see. Have thoughts that nobody else can, can, you know, I've got no, I don't have nothing, no time for that. God, clean my mind, clean my thoughts, yeah. clean my heart. Yeah. No, this year, this year, I want to break through. Amen. This year, I want to break through. This year, I'm going to get a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. That's got to be the mindset of every believer in here. This year, I'm getting a breakthrough. No, nobody's going to stop me. I'm convinced mm -hmm. that when prayers are not answered, it has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with Amen. us. Amen. Are you convinced of that? Amen. If you are convinced of that, then you won't look at God and say, what's wrong? You'll look at yourself and say, what's wrong? Amen. I'm convinced it's not God. Amen. It's never God. If, if I'm believing God for something that's in his word, and I've got every right to believe his word, because I've got evidence, because it's written down, that I can pray for that, and I'm not receiving it, I'm looking at me. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, what's wrong with me? God, and then the first place you got to look is in your heart. Yes, how you treat people, how you've been acting, yes, right. what your motives are. Oh, oh God. What you praying for, what's the motive of, of why are you praying for that? Mm -hmm. How is that going to benefit the kingdom of God? How does God, what does God need to bless you with that? That's what you got to, you got to examine your heart. Mm -hmm. God will give you, and see a good seeing abundant above all you can ask or think. Mm -hmm. But God only moves when the motive is right. Amen. You want a big old house. What's the motive behind it? Why do you want such a big house? Because you want everybody to see. You know, and, and you can come up with all the little fancy reasons you want it, but God knows your heart. He knows you're proud. He knows you're prideful. Come on now. And he can't be a part of it. Uh -huh. You know? The Bible said the wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous. Amen. Amen. That's why it was hard. I couldn't buy no no uh, Powerball ticket because I'm contributing to the wicked. Amen. I sure said, Lord, I hope I know somebody that win. Because <laughs> I'm the righteous. <laughs> I can be on the receiving end. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous. <laughs> So if you bought a ticket and you think fast and call them you wicked, <laughs> well, you contributed to the wicked, right? Because we know the power of all is not of God. So, but just know you gave to the wicked. But God can still bless you as a righteous person. I've been praying and said, Lord, let somebody win that power ball. Like, I know a lot of wicked people. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, you know, my heart, your heart can't let you do things Amen. and go in directions Amen. that's connected to unrighteous. Amen. It says, then, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. You ever just said, Lord, help me? Amen. And meant it. Amen. I know you said it, but have you ever said, Lord, help me? Amen. And you meant, Lord, help me. Amen. A lot of unanswered prayers. People ask me all the time, you know, I've been praying. Well, so many unanswered prayers. I said, well, it's not God. Mm -hmm. It's not God. 
It's us. It's us. It's you. It's you. Whatever it is you're praying for. And it's unanswered. And it might be that there's nothing wrong in your heart. It may be that you're just not persistent. You're not standing long enough. You're not praying long enough. You're not, you're not hanging in there with it. You pray and God don't do it. You get mad and go on. You pray for a little while and, 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 and you don't keep going. You, you, you don't even go back to that prayer. When you're praying, you got to have a definite object. Uh, object of what you're praying for. Whether it's healing, that's got to be your object. Mm -hmm. Finance has got to be your object. Whatever the object is, it's got to be a definite object. Mm -hmm. And you got to pray for that until you see it come. And you got to be persistent. The, this woman, it says, uh, it says she worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And look what Jesus said. And, and But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and the casket, the dogs. Because the, the, the Jews, that's how they saw the Canaanites, the Greeks, the, the Gentiles. They saw them as, as dog. And Jesus wasn't calling her a dog. He was just saying, you know, I'm the children's bread, and, and I've, I've not come for, for uh, the Gentiles. I've come for the children of Israel. I'm the bread of life for the Israel. And Jesus said, it's not right for me to give myself to somebody else. And she said, true, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. That woman took Jesus back. <laughs> Instead of Jesus using the parable, she used the parable of Jesus. She said, it's not, you know, even, even the dogs, even the dogs at, you know, the, at the, you know, the, the Gentiles that, serve, that, that are servants, even they can have the crumbs, even their little dogs, little puppies, their little puppies, even their little puppies eat the crumbs under the table. Jesus knew that was right. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Listen, she was what? Persistent. 2016, persistent. And being consistent. Waking up knowing what you're going to pray about. Having a, having a, 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 a focused prayer. Focused on praying. And staying with whatever your prayer is. Whatever it is you want God to do, I'm going to write it down. I want God to do this. I want God to do this. And I'm going to stick with it till God do it. That's what the woman did, the Canaanite woman did. That's what the, the, un, the, the, the widow did with the unjust judge. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Not just with her mouth, but with her heart. That's right. You can't just stay with it. You gotta stay with it with your you gotta that's that's a prevailing prayer. When you prevail, you know God gonna answer. You gotta you gotta start praying at the beginning of your prayer. You gotta know when I sit down and ask God this, he's gonna do it. I'm about to ask God something, he's gonna do it. That's gotta be your mindset. He's, this woman knew that Jesus was gonna do it. She didn't go away. She stayed right there. Mm -hmm. She didn't, she wasn't discouraged by the disciples. She stayed right there. She worshiped him because she knew he was going to do it. You know why she knew it? She knew his heart. She knew Jesus' heart. She knew Jesus couldn't let her leave there with her daughter being vexed with a spirit. Mm -hmm. She knew it. That's why she stayed right there. Why did the woman stay there? Because she knew Jesus could do it and she knew he would do it. That's prevailed. She prevailed. She travailed. She stayed there until an opening came, until an answer came. And that's what we've got to do. That's what we, that's what you, that's what we got to pray, pray, pray. We've got to set ourselves apart. We've got to set ourselves, we got to get with God like, listen, and, and understand what I'm saying when I say this. We got to get with God like we don't have a family. You got to get with God just like it's you and God. Amen. When I say get with God like you don't have a family, I'm saying that's how set apart you got to be. Which means you you can't you know you can't be you got to you got to have your mind on the things of God. Amen. 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 It may sound it may sound strange, 
But you, 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 if you understand what I'm saying, you understand. If you don't, you just don't understand it. But you've got to be so set apart that fa your family, you take care of them. You take care of your responsibilities. Take care of your business. But, that's, but your mind ain't on that. Your mind is on the things of God. You're set apart. You're not praying just for the family. You got the time to pray for your family, pray for your children, and pray for your loved ones, and pray for the health of your body. But now, when you get with God, it's about his stuff. It's about you being employed to do the work of the kingdom. It's about your soul being employed to win souls. Well, I tell you, it's going to be a success for you. Amen. It's going to be a success for you. It really is. And it's going to be that way. Listen, the commitment of every member of this church is vital. It's vital. I'm going to tell you, I believe it's going to be this vital. I believe the people who are not committed in this church are going to feel like they're not a part of this church. I believe that's what's going to happen this year. I believe it's going to be a, I'm praying everybody's committed. I believe it's just going to be such a, a, a upward vertical elevation that, that if you're not real, you're going to feel left behind. Mm -hmm. You don't feel strange, which you're going to have to get serious this year. I mean, about the things of God, Amen. not about being a church member. Amen. It's the difference being a church member and the things of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Y'all ever been to Petroleum Club? Anybody ever been to Petroleum Club? Nice club that. I mean, you have to have a membership to go eat at. You got nice food. It's, it's, it's real nice. Detroit Club was the Cambridge Club also. Those nice places like that. That's what our church is. This ain't no Buffy church. This ain't no Buffy. Buffy, you know, they put all that stuff out. You can pick over it and, you know, it's not. No. We, we, we point it on exactly where we're going. We got we eat specific meals. Amen. Amen. We eat certain meals and they and they high quality meals. Amen. 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 And you can't get up, you can't just go up there unless you invite. If you're invited, you go with somebody. But you can't just walk in there, you know, and get you a tray. Matter of fact, they ain't got no trays up there. You, you, this is, this, we've got to eat at a different level. Amen. 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 We got to catch up. We got to catch up and get ahead of what the devil doing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't, I'm telling you, we're going to carry his kingdom down this year. Amen. 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 We're going to carry his kingdom down this year. Amen. 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 People are going to come see what we're doing. Amen. People are going to join. We're going to invite our friends. We're going to invite our family. And we're going to be persistent and consistent.